Hello everybody, this is Miss Whitley and we are going to be doing English today at looking at our inference skills. Now, you use your inference skills all the time, whether it's looking at a photograph or a picture or every day when we're doing our guided reading. It's really the skill of reading between those lines sort of being a bit of a detective seeking out the information when it's not obvious okay so first things first we're going to have a look at this picture now using our inference skills um, it is a picture of a room isn't it in a house with a table with things on and a clock in the corner and um, it says is is it 11.05 in the morning or in the afternoon? Now, with inference skills, um, you have to look very, very closely at the picture. So, let's look at the picture. There's some orange juice on the table. Hmm, that's a pretty good clue, isn't it? So... Because there's orange juice and because generally people drink orange juice for breakfast, I would assume, as well as it being daylight, that it will be 11.05 in the morning. Because normally people drink things like cocoa and, and chocolate, hot chocolate at bedtime or glasses of milk and also generally at 11.05 in the evening it is very dark and there's a lot of natural sunlight through that window. Okay, let's have a look at the other question. How many people are having breakfast? How do you know? Well, how do I know? Obviously, uh, the, there's some clues there. There's four chairs at the table, so that's one clue. And also there's four glasses of orange juice. So I, a good answer will be uh, there are four people having breakfast as there are four chairs at the breakfast table and there are also four glasses of orange juice. So... Remember, when you're using your inference skill, you don't just give the answer, you have to justify it. I'm sure you're fed up of hearing us teachers saying, justify your answer, prove why that is the case. Okay, so let's look at this video. Hmm, there's something hanging up, it looks like a bit of a cloakroom, or there's certainly coats hanging up. It's a bag, a scarf, uh, it looks like a bit of a cycle helmet up there, doesn't it? So it says, what time of year do you think it is? How do you know? Hmm, not a great deal of clues there, but there's some coats, isn't there? So do you generally wear coats in summertime? Possibly not, maybe probably in the north of England, but uh, generally we don't wear coats, do we, in winter. Scarves, uh, sorry, in summer, scarves. Now that's an item that you tend to wear at winter time or maybe autumn. And do you ride your bikes in winter? Probably not as much. So hmm, using my detective skills, I would possibly assume that it is either uh, autumn because it tends to get a little bit cold or early spring because the jackets don't look that thick but it will keep the rain off you and I probably wouldn't cycle so much in the middle of winter so I think that's a pretty good answer so let's look at the other question what form of transport do they use hmm well, I don't know, they might have a car. There's no clues that they've got a car, so I can't really say that. Um, they may have a, um, may use a, the local bus, but there's no evidence that, the, uh, that they'll use the local bus. But I certainly know that they'll be cycling because there is a cycle helmet there. So what form of transport do they use? They obviously use or at least one person uses a bicycle 
uh, because there is a bicycle helmet hanging up. So I've justified my answer. Now, moving on to the last question on this picture. How many people might live in their house? Now, there seems to be three jackets, doesn't there? So there might be 23 people living in the house, but I can't say that because we don't have the evidence for it. So I would say at least three people live in this house because there's three different jackets. Okay, there may be just one person and they've got lots of jackets, but we tend not to know that, do we? So we can't just guess. So remember, when you are using your inference skills, always justify your answer. Let's look at this next photograph. Hmm, looks quite dark, isn't it? But as you look closely at it, um, I want you to see describe this picture so have a think what what is in this picture what can we see i'm going to have a look at it as well all right well it's a very dark picture why is it so dark mm, i think it's because of the dark clouds in the sky it's certainly not a bright blue sky is it it looks quite thunderous doesn't it also the trees they look a bit scary, don't they? They're, they're, there's no leaves on them. There's no, there's no flowers or anything like that. So I wonder why the trees look like that. Is it because they're dead or they've been burnt? I don't know. And then surrounding the trees, there's no, no green grass or flowers or any form of life. There's no animals hopping around or bees buzzing or anything like that. Hmm. And then this boy, what is he doing there? He's just laying there, isn't he? wonder why he's there. He's all alone as well, isn't he? What, what, what thoughts do you have about that? Okay, so let's move on to look at these questions about the picture. So, it says, how does the photograph make you feel and why? Well, I think the photograph makes me feel a little bit um, sad because there's really not a great deal of life in the picture. And the reason that it makes me feel sad is because it's very dark, isn't it? So there's no sunlight and there's no real form, no real sign of life apart from the boy who's all alone. So it does make me feel a little bit sad. Who is the boy? Now, we don't know. I can't guess who the boy is. But all I know, and why is he there? I haven't a clue. It might be, I don't know, he might have got lost. I don't know. Um, he's just laid there. So there's not really any clues to that apart from how he's feeling. Well, I assume that he is feeling quite lonely because he's not smiling, is he? And he's, he's, there's nobody with him. So possibly he's feeling quite lonely. The next question is, why aren't there any leaves on the trees? Hmm, I don't know. Could it have been a fire? But then the, the grass, the, the brownie grass around it would, would be scorched, wouldn't it? It doesn't look scorched. Um, but the trees look pretty dead. So... I assume or infer that the, it might be because there's not been any rain because it looks very, very dry. So it's killed all the trees and there's not been any reason for the other plants and uh, wildlife to grow in that area because it's just been uh, dry. OK, so that's what I think. And look at the sky. What is the effect of the colours? Because the colours are really dark, it makes me feel, it sets a real sombre, sombre meaning sad mood, doesn't it? Okay. And what may happen next? 
Hmm. Well, I can't guess. I'm not just going to guess. I'm going to use the evidence from this picture. I predict that there may be a massive thunderstorm, which is why the boy may be waiting to see whether his land is going to be filled with that valuable source of water to feed the surrounding area. So I think there's going to be a major thunderstorm because in the sky there, there are some black clouds looming around. Okay, so that is really unpicking that picture and getting as much information from the clues to answer the, the questions. OK, and that is what I would like you to do in your task today. In your purple mash activity, I've sent you a picture and I want you to try and unpick it on the, uh, the first picture. Try and write what you can see in the picture. Don't guess, just use what you can see. And then I would like you to answer the questions using evidence from the picture so that means you can't just say oh the man feels happy without backing it up with why he's happy okay brilliant all the best have fun take care bye